Rotoscoping doesn't have to suck. I'll show you the fastest way to clean cut your subject, add elements to your scene, and make your VFX shine. Let's dive into it. I have a clip here in After Effects of my subject walking across a cliff. I'm gonna add some objects to the background. So I'll start off making sure my playhead is in the first frame and I'll double click on my clip and going into the layer details, I'll select the rotor brush tool right up here. Now to make my brush larger, I can simply hold the command button and scroll up or down to change the size. For now, I'll keep it pretty large and I'll try to get as much of my subject as I can in one swipe of my cursor. And you see the magenta stroke outlining my subject. That's my roto. It's looking pretty good initially. If you're missing any spots, you could hold option and the circle will turn red and I could remove that part right here and the outline will change. And I'll make some additional adjustments to my subject here. If I wanna change the view of my roto, I could select one of the alpha overlays and fine tune it even more. Once you get to the hair, that's the tricky part, but let me show you a little trick to the hair. If I switch over to the refine edge tool or hit option W again, you'll see my circle will turn blue. I can make my brush a little larger and draw over her hair here and it will refine the edges of the thin parts like hair specifically and blend it seamlessly into your roto. You see how the magenta edges are feathered a bit? That's what we want. I'll continue with my refine edge tool a bit more. And once I'm in a good place, I could check my alpha overlay and see how it looks. I'll fine tune her camera strap here with my refine edge tool as well. And with some additional fine tuning, my result is looking good. So when I'm all set with the roto, I can hit the freeze button to lock it in. This way After Effects doesn't have to propagate every time I preview or move around the timeline. Once it's frozen, I can't make any edits, but I can unfreeze it if I need to make any further adjustments. Another thing I like to do to speed up my machine is to pre-render the alpha by going to composition, pre-render. And I export a loss list with alpha and I import that back into my sequence. So you see here in the render time down here, the difference between the pre-rendered alpha and the roto layer. So that's significant. That could save you minutes, if not hours. I can hide my roto layer for now. Now I'll move on to compositing elements into my background. So for speed's sake, I'm gonna have ChatGPT 4.0 help me composite some VFX elements in some screenshots that I could use to animate later on. And after a few generations, I decided to use this variation. So I'll save this image and bring it into Photoshop where I masked out the elements and separated my windmill layer to animate later on. Save this as a PSD. Okay, so I have a composition here with my main alpha overlay on top and I have just my main layer on bottom. So I'm gonna put my objects in the background, basically in between these two layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import my windmill that I showed you, make sure that composition is selected, hit okay. And I'm gonna bring that into my comp. And you see it lays in pretty nicely. If I go to my first frame, that's kind of where I want everything to be. I can go into my pre-comp here and you see each layer kind of separated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cape layer. I'll just rename that. I'm gonna copy that. I'll hide it from here. Go back to my main comp, paste it into my main comp. Cause I want those two layers to be separated. So from here, you could see that it needs tracking. Cause obviously it needs to track the motion of the scene. So since this is not too much of a 3D scene, there's not much parallax, it's kind of planar tracking would work best. So with my bottom layer selected, I'll go to animation, track in Boris FX Mocha, and I'll click on the Mocha icon. And then Mocha is gonna pop up. And from here, I'll click on the X-Spline tool, and I'll start by creating a little area here that I'll track. So I'm gonna click show surface and then align surface. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna make sure that this maintains the proportions of the comp because given that it's a PSD, it has the same proportions as my comp. So making sure the blue outline is on the edges of my comp, that looks good. Now I'm gonna enable perspective just in case, and then I'll track forward. Okay, and that looks pretty good. That's all done. So then I'll go back to my first frame and I'll do the same thing, but I'll create another X spline behind my subject right about here. I'll select sort of the edges of the cliff. Now I'll do the same thing, show surface, align surface, and I'll enable perspective, and then I'll track forward. Okay, that looks pretty good. The next thing I'll do is my layers, I'll just rename them. So I'll name this cape, and I'll name this one 
windmill. And then I'll click on the save button and I'll close out of Mocha and then back into After Effects, I'll drop down the tracking data and I'll click on create track data. And I'll start with the cape and I'll click okay. And then under layer export two, I'll select my cape layer and then I'll click on apply export. And just like that, if I preview it, you see it does an amazing job tracking that area. So now we'll do the same thing with our windmill. So I'll go to create track data and then I'll select the windmill layer, hit okay. Go to layer export two and then select our windmill and click apply export. And you see this one came out a little bit shaky and it could be because I enabled perspective. So I'm gonna click on the windmill. I'll delete that corner pin that I just added. Go back to my first layer. I'll go back to my mocha track and I'll click on my windmill layer. I'm just gonna take off perspective and take off skew. And I'll retrack this and I'll save that, close back out. And then we'll try again to create track data with the windmill selected, we'll hit okay. And then make sure our windmill layer export two is selected and I'll hit apply export again. And you see that does a much better job tracking. So sometimes the skew and some of the settings you have in Mocha, you just have to double check and make sure it applies to the area that you're tracking. So this looks pretty good. The only thing I have to do is scale this up because it does cut off a little bit of the windmill, but I'm actually gonna rotate my windmill now. So I'll go back into my windmill free comp. And what I'll do is I'll just scale up my windmill a little bit like that. And if I hit the R for rotation, and if I rotate it, you see it doesn't rotate on the right axis. And because of the perspective of this, it's not gonna rotate perfectly, but I can give it a little bit of motion, subtle motion, just to add to the scene. So what I'm gonna do is, let me hide this for now. If I click on the pan behind anchor point tool or hit the Y key, I could take this little anchor point cursor and I could drag it to the center of the windmill. So now if I rotate it, it's gonna rotate on the axis of where the windmill is. So what I could do is I'll start it like right about there on the first frame, hit my keyframe, go to the end of the comp, and then I'll give it a little bit of motion like that. I could enable motion blur to add a little bit extra to it. One thing I also have to do is I have to adjust my anchor point of my windmill layer here. Just a little bit more. I wanna make sure that none of it gets cut off. That looks really good. Move it over a little bit. And anytime you adjust the anchor point, it's not gonna mess up the track of the mocha. I could actually scale this up a little bit. Adjust the anchor point a little bit more, right about there. Okay, so that's looking really good. Here's my final result. Thanks for watching.